Hello! Today we are going to talk about the SPI Serial Peripheral Interface Communication which will enable us to communicate with ESP32 via SPI communication and uh, we will do it inside the ESP IDF environment specifically we will be using VSPI and we will talk about it uh, lately, a virtual serial peripheral interface. A little reminder regarding the SPI concept. The SPI concept enables the, the communication between two chips, for example, or on the uh, on the PCB connection between two different uh, devices. The important thing is to define one device as a master and the other devices as slaves. Inside this PI, we have four uh, pins which, uh, which enables the clock transmission, the clock from the master to the slave devices, MOSI, which stands for master out, slave in, which transmits the data from the master to the slave, MISO, master in, slave out, which receives the data from the slave, and chip select, which defines to which slave uh, we can communicate to. For example, inside master we have a few pins for chip select, and each pin is connected to the relevant slave. In this case, we have only one slave, so we are using only one chip select, which is connected to the chip select to the uh, slave. In order to understand and to dive into this concept, we are performing the following connection between the software and the hardware. We are taking our ESP chip and connect different channels to the scope and see which uh, program definitions uh, gives us uh, different scope outputs. Specifically, we are using the clock, master out to send some data, and chip select, which are defined on pins number 14, 13, and 15 inside the ESP32. The interesting thing regarding uh, my board, which is DevKit V1, ESP32 DevKit V1, if you can see that VSPI communication here is defined, for example, or suggested on the following pins, and HSPI communication is suggested on the following pins. You can see it in yellow. We are using pins number 13, 14, and 15, which is suggested for HSPI but we are implementing it in VSPI and those things are flexible. Regarding the uh, expressive, uh, um, expressive materials on the net, uh, we have a pretty vast explanation regarding SPI master driver inside API references, peripherals, APIs, SPI master driver. And here you can see that SPI0 and SPI1 here are internal uh, communication and used for internal communication. Where SPI2 and SPI3, which is called HSPI and VSPI respectively, respectively are used for external communication from different devices. So we are using one of those specifically VS, VSPI or SPI3. Uh, here we have an explanation about this subject, uh, not easy to understand from my point of view, and also it uh, have, have an example for uh, communication with the memory, with external device. We used the following example and as always on this channel, simplified it a lot. This is an example. And we used the more, more simplified version 
inside I can show you and seems IoT devices repositories free autos ESP IDF SPI and here you have um, the file VSPI initiation here which is pretty short like uh, 50 lines or so uh, as always we copied it to our uh, to our editor inside our project and let's run it to see how it works okay meanwhile I will go over the file to explain the details and then we can dive into the different uh, definitions to see how you can see them on the screen uh, okay the only two lines that is written is VSPI initiation and VSP write via VSPI and A. We are writing only an A character. And we want to see uh, how the scope can see all those actions, those two lines. Let's go over the code. The includes definition, which are pretty standard. We define the tag VSPI this is a tag here and now we inside main define two uh, configuration the device configuration which defines the clock which is here one megahertz uh, please note that this is a one microsecond cycle we'll show it later we define the mode, SPI mode, which relevant to the clock signal starts with the low signal uh, formality. Here is very important, we define the CS pin, which is on pin number 15, and the Q size, which are not using currently. Inside bus configuration, in order to initialize VSPI, we, d we define the, the pins, the MISO and the MOSI pins, which are on the number 12 and 13. We are using only the MOSO pin, we are using only this. And we define the pin for the clock on number 14. Uh, those we kept pretty standard and didn't use it. So, the first, first uh, line is to initialize the VSPI host and to connect it to the uh, bus configuration to this configuration so we define the pins for the VSPI the second is uh, to define the SPI handle which we define the VSPI host uh, for the uh, SPI handle and uh, connect it to device configuration. Those two lines basically connect those that those structures to the uh, SPI communication. And here we have the specific transmission that we want to perform. We define the variable SPI tra trans transaction uh, transaction variable trans. And we have to fill the data inside trans in order to understand, um, in order to define the data that we want to transmit. We allocate the memory, and for example, see, we, de we define the length of our uh, message for 20 bits. Uh, 20 bits. Let's see what scope understand from this definition. Okay. This is the scope output, and here you see the clock output. When we see it on the resolution of 10 milliseconds, you can see that every 10 milliseconds we have an event. If we dive into this event, you can see that each event on the resolution of 2 uh, milliseconds we have a uh, 20 20 uh, 
20 bit clock how can you see you see every square is two nanosecond and we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten multiplied by two 20 millisecond event when in each event we have a in each uh, square of two milliseconds we have two cycles of one millisecond you see it was defined here one millisecond cycle and we have 20 cycles total we can see this cycle uh, in the zoom in in uh, 200 nanosecond scale and you can see that each cycle is uh, approximately 5 nanoseconds and up and 5 nanoseconds down uh, to total uh, 500 nanoseconds up and 500 nanoseconds down a total uh, 1 uh, microsecond and now let's go to the CS output definition CS is a initiate is a standing for the transmission for the for the other the slave pin on the zoom out scale you can see that all those events are taking place for CS every 10 milliseconds you see every 10 milliseconds this is a scale and every 10 milliseconds you have an event if we dive into this event you see that each event lasts 20 milliseconds you have the 10 millisecond scale two squares a 20 millisecond event so during the transmission the CS pin is down okay and now we want to transmit an, uh, a character and you can see here the transmission we can zoom out the transmission and see that every 10 milliseconds we have a transmission and when we dive in the transmission uh, why it's uh, every 10 milliseconds because our loop here is with delay of 10 milliseconds so we have a transmission every 10 milliseconds when we die in dive inside this transmission you can see the on the one millisecond scale the transmission of uh, eight bits which in binary are uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So you see 0, 1, zero, um, 5 times 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 0, and another 1. So this is a transmission for a character. So we write it inside the trans TX buffer and uh, print out what we have transmitted and then we have an infinite loop to transmit it every 10 millisecond and every 10 millisecond we have this transmission so in this video you have witnessed the basic initiation of the SPI on the ESP32 inside the ESP IDF environment and you can see all those definitions all those definitions how they can be shown on the scope and what which definition means for the chip output thank you